Hello and welcome. You're with us here on Down to Earth. I'm Abha Bakai and today I'm going to be meeting Naveen Krishna of SMB Wheels, an entrepreneur whose mission in life is to help the cycle rickshaw puller. He helps them to get a whole new life by giving them ownership of their own rickshaw and a whole new identity. Here's how. Varanasi is one of the oldest cities in India. It is also sacred to many. Extremely spiritual with pilgrims flocking to take a dip in the Ganges. The sunrise set against the backdrop of the centuries old temples is probably one of the most impressive sights in the world. In a city like this, rickshaws are a must for travelers wanting to get through small by lanes and busy streets to nearby destinations. Rickshaw pullers are a marginalized community. Lacking education and formal representation, they're often harassed by local authorities. That's where SMB Wheels comes in. Founded by Naveen Krishna, a graduate from Banaras Hindu University who worked for six years with rickshaw drivers in the non-profit and for-profit social space, he also headed the Rickshaw Bank project in the capacity of National Coordinator for the Center for Rural Development, a non-profit enterprise based in Gohati, Assam. He was recruited and trained under CAPAR's Young Professional Team. Naveen came up with a simple model that cut out the middleman and gave the rickshaw puller ownership of his own rickshaw and easier access to license. Instead of renting rickshaws daily, SMV offers rickshaw pullers the opportunity to own their asset after a 14-month payment period. By sourcing parts directly from suppliers and in bulk, SMV is able to offer a better price for the rickshaws as well. Actually, uh, it started from a conversation with a rickshaw puller and uh, I got associated with several uh, non-for-profit organizations. Yeah. And uh, then I learned that, you know, grants are not enough to make anything sustainable. And the community of rickshaw pullers, they need something more, you know, accessible mode of payments rather than a grant. So whenever I spoke to a rickshaw puller, he always used to say, Sir, I am paying 40 rupees to a fleet merchant. Right. I can pay that amount to you. I, I have no issues around that. And if you can give me ownership, that would be the best thing which can happen in my life. You had moments in the beginning when you really were wondering whether or not this was something you'd managed to make happen. Not because of your own uh, desire or any doubts on that front, but because of the sheer funding required for it. As you said, grants at some level are not all that you need. And you decided to turn this into a business venture. You said, why does it have to be a not-for-profit uh, uh, venture? It can be a proper business model. How did you make that transition? So basically, see, uh, while working with the non-for-profits uh, and seeing the, you know, the mindset uh, of the things, and if you see the rickshaw puller community, they earn money every day, and they spend a part of it in giving the rent and the part of it in the food. Yeah. But uh, they are left with ample money with them, uh, where, which they need to save. So that idea, that unit economics, it uh, came into our mind and we started, uh, you know, uh, uh, there was a feeling and confidence that this can, uh, this can be a social business. You were saying how in the early stages, all you were looking for was 40,000 rupees yes. for three rickshaws to get going. Today, of course, you've come a long way. Right. But tell us a little bit about that time and, you know, the thoughts and going through your head uh, when you were struggling to get just that amount of money. Uh, you said most of your savings had been saturated in the right. earlier venture. So you had really come down to the basics at that point. So basically, I went to uh, Delhi to meet uh, some of the persons who had referred to some of my, some of my, my friends that uh, they can, you know, help you in this venture and they do some kind of venture for capital funding. Yeah. So I went to Delhi and Mumbai and it was uh, a, ter a tough experience, you can say, meeting these people uh, standing outside the office for the whole day. Sometimes uh, people call me in the, you know, hotels yeah. where to make the pitch and uh, I was wondering, you know, while they were holding their glasses and talking to me that I need that, <laughs> that glass which you are holding, you know. Just the amount of money that that yes. bit of champagne costs, that's all I need. That's all I need and and it took me like, you know, one and a half years in fact yeah. 
uh, meeting people, meeting investors, and going to places uh, to get the real funding in the uh, the company. But that first forty thousand, yeah. it was it came uh, from one of my mentors, and uh, it was a, a great you know encouragement. What convinced them when you went about making your pitch and showing your business plan to people? What was the convincing factor? First one was if you see the market size, so estimated rickshaw pullers are ten million. So even you know, even if you you tap like ten percent of the market, it's a huge market for that. Plus social impact wise, in our business you can measure the complete social impact. So the number of ownerships given in given to the rickshaw pullers, okay, that can be counted. The number of legal licenses and insurance done for the family of the rickshaw pullers and the rickshaw uh, and the rickshaw puller itself can be counted. Plus the savings. Which they have done from the day they become the member of SMB, and the day the, yeah. the day they graduated the program, that can be counted. So uh, we feel privileged. I mean, uh, as the part of SMB, that we can measure our social impact, which is somehow very difficult uh, right. with um, uh, several organizations to measure. So that was the something uh, you know something very convincing which investors. Uh, liked about yeah. What did your parents say, uh, Naveen, when you were starting out, and when they really saw you going through a lot of uh, trouble trying to get this on its way? I belong to a very traditional place, Varanasi, and uh, convincing my parents about this concept was uh, was a big nut to crack for me. Yeah. Uh, I tried to convince my father, but uh, somehow he was quite resistant with this idea, with, and. Uh, he was quite disappointed also because he thought that I have spent so much of money in educating you and now what you are going to do? You are going to sell cycles with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> my mother uh, was a big, uh, you know, strength at that time and and in fact, uh, you know, some of the good friends and people who who supported me were the, you can say, were the backbone at that point of time. So yes, the, there were a lot of resistance, but you know when I, I, I just believe. I mean, I think some sometimes that I am just born to sell cycle resource to these people, you know, and to uh, give them dignity in the society. And I guess when you see that happening around you, then it really does bring that belief back home. Yes, certainly. Yes, certainly. Okay, let's take a very quick break. We're getting down to earth here in Varanasi with Naveen Krishna. We'll be back in just a moment.